What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, smoky, bacony cheddar and bacon smoked potato skins. Coming up! These are some pork jowls. Pat them dry. I got these from my friends over at Porter Road and they are exactly what they sound like. The jowl of the pig, the old pig cheek meat. And these ones are quite small. I didn't know that there was two per pack, but that is fine because usually jowls are extremely fatty. So these are trimmed down really nicely, which is pretty awesome. And if you've never cooked a jowl before, it's a really great cut. It's super fatty, very well marbled. And it's a lot like pork belly in that it's almost 50%, if not more fat. So great thing for making bacon. That's typically what you're gonna see with pork jowl is making jowl bacon but honestly a cut like this where it's nice and thin I'm sure you could throw that on the grill slice it up kind of looks like a secreto almost if you're looking for a new cut to play around with I highly recommend getting yourself some jowls and I think these are gonna make for some great little bacon lardones on top of our potato skin so let's get these on cure and to do that is quite simple we're gonna do the same thing we do when making regular bacon which is first get the weight of these things and once weighed out we're gonna do 3% of our curing solution this is the same bacon cure I made a big batch of a couple months back you can check out the bacon video to see exactly how I made this but it's so Salt, sugar, pink salt, and some other spices. Got some herbs and chili flakes and pepper in there and stuff. So these two jowls weigh about 525 grams together. So we're gonna do about 15 grams of our curing salt and we're just gonna dump it all over. And this is an equilibrium cure. So we really wanna make sure all of this salt gets onto these jowls. Nothing to it, just a nice healthy coating. And then into a vac seal bag they go. Ooh. Beautiful. And now into my fridge, these go to cure. Should not take long, these are real thin. And I'll probably rotate them, flip them over here and there just to make sure that they're curing evenly. And we'll check back in in a few days. Five days later. Out of the cure, these come looking nice. Got some beautiful red color to them still, feeling a little bit more firm. And the first thing I need to do is go rinse these off, get off any of this extra cure to make sure this stuff isn't too salty. And once nicely dried, on the pit we go. I'm gonna smoke these pretty low and slow just because they're so thin, but we're making bacon after all, so we really wanna take these up to an internal temperature of around 150 degrees. And the amount of smoke we get on there is dependent on how low and slow we cook. So today I'm probably gonna rock this pit around 200 degrees. After about three, four hours, these guys have come up to temp and are coming off the pit. Looking nice and smoky, nothing's overcooked, nothing's starting to render too far yet which is exactly what we're looking for. Smelling good, feeling firm. So out these come. I'm gonna wrap them up in plastic and let them cool down in the fridge. And our jowl bacon is done. It's potato time. What I got here is just some medium sized russet potatoes. And we gotta get those baked off. But first I'm gonna go around and poke them a few times with a fork just so we don't build up too much pressure underneath the skin and have these things explode on us. Next up, we're gonna give these a little bit of a salt crust by going into this bowl, which has some water in it. And we're gonna throw in a big fat pinch of salt. This is a method I learned about on America's Test Kitchen. They say by putting it in a brine as opposed to oiling the skin, your potatoes will come out crispier and less gummy. So we're gonna give it a shot today. And the theory is that once all the water evaporates, which will happen really quick at 450 degrees, then all the salt will stay on the skin and get it nice and crispy and delicious. So just gonna dunk it in this little brine here for a couple of seconds and onto a wire rack we go. Beautiful. I've got the old Woodwind Pro here fired up to 450 degrees and simply enough, on we go. Ow! Should take about 45 minutes to an hour. While we wait for those potatoes to cook, let's go ahead and get our cheese sliced up. And by sliced, I mean shredded. Going with some sharp cheddar today, as well as some mozzarella. And you can use whatever cheese you like. I was thinking some pepper jack would be nice, or maybe just go full American, get that nice melty gooiness. I almost made my own cheddar mozzarella American, but you know, that just seems like a bit much for this video. Beautiful. Next up, let's get some of this jowl bacon sliced up, shall we? Beautiful looking stuff, I tell ya. And you can make these as big or as small as you see fit. You know, if you wanted to just do one big bacon burn end on a potato skin, that would be awesome. Or if you wanted to dice these real small and go bacon bits, that would work too. I'm going for a nice little quarter inch cube. 
Beautiful looking stuff, feeling nicely cured and smoked. I think we've made ourselves some excellent jowl bacon here, folks. Oh, beautiful, love it. After about an hour, off the pit these come. Looking nice, I flipped them over once throughout the cook to make sure they're cooking evenly, but they are probing nice and tender, feeling nice and soft. And now, simply enough, we just have to cut these in half. Just let these steam out a little bit. Whew, hot potato. I'm just gonna let these cool off for a little bit. After these have cooled down nicely, all we need to do is go through and hollow them out into little potato skins. I'm gonna use a little tool like this, but a spoon or a butter knife, you know the drill, folks. I'm gonna carve a nice little quarter inch border around the outside, because we don't want these to be just skins. We still wanna have some potato in there. And then scoop out the insides into a little bowl here. Not much to it. There's probably some infomercial late night TV gadget that does this really well, but uh, as long as you let them cool down and they're not piping hot, Real simple. And that is looking perfect to me. Now we repeat. And once these are all cored out, we're gonna hit them with some fat. You could easily throw some butter in there or paint some oil in there. But today for some good flavor and convenience, we're going with some sprayable duck fat. Just a nice healthy coating, folks. Don't be shy here. This is gonna help crisp them up while adding some wonderful flavor. Oh yeah, love it. I got this guy fired up pretty hot. It's about 450 in there still. And on we go to crisp these up. Shouldn't take long. And while those toast away, let's go ahead and get our little bacon bits fired off. Going in. Man, I sure hope this is enough. A lot of fat in that jowl meat, I tell you what. These are looking absolutely gorgeous. It's only been a couple of minutes, but I'm just trying to get these crispy. These are gonna cook a little bit more once we load them into the potatoes, but you know, just render out some of this fat and get them as crispy as you see fit. And just after a few minutes, these are looking good to me. So out they come onto a paper towel here and just look at all this gorgeous post oak smoked homemade bacon fat that we get to put on whatever we want. In retrospect, I should have cooked the bacon first and then brush the potato skins with this but that's why I make these videos so you can learn from me and all my mistakes God, this smells good and just like that about 15 minutes later these are looking beautiful nice and crispy you can see them starting to brown up on the inside and on the exterior oh Love it, definitely nice and crispy. Ah, oh, love that. So now it's time to load these up. And to do so, we're gonna start off by putting a little bit of butter in the bottom of each one of these, just because, you know, you can't have a potato without some butter. Come on, beautiful. Now we're gonna take some of our cheese mixture and just go right on in. Oh yeah, don't be shy, folks. Just fill it right on up. Oh, I'm so excited for this right now. Beautiful, nice and filled up. I'm gonna pop this back on the grill for maybe five minutes just to get this cheese a little bit melted. Doesn't take long. And look how much that cheese melted down. That's why we did a little pre-melt. But of course, now is the time to go in with all of our beautiful little lardones, our little jowl bacon bites. And I gotta say, these are absolutely spectacular. I have been nibbling on them all day. Ooh, that was a lot. You know, that's the beauty of making your own. Not sure if you ever got these out of the freezer section. I used to have those as a kid all the time. And it was just like maybe a pinch of bacon. All the cheese would fall off on one side. And it's at this point right here where these would be great for a tailgate or a football game. If you got it to this stage, bring them to the place where you're going and pop these in the oven just for one final heat through and melt. Woo! Would not mind if someone showed up to my house with some freshly made potato skins. It's bacon, cheese, and potatoes, folks. Come on. All right, one final melt and the, ooh, that's still hot. That's all right. One final melt and these will be done. Boom, big reveal. Oh God, they look so good, folks. Nice and melty, nice and cheesy. I am pretty excited about these, I tell you would. But of course, we're not quite done yet. I'm gonna top these off with a little sour cream. It's actually Mexican crema, which I'm a big fan of. I like the drizzleability of it, but I suppose you could load these with whatever you want. Instead of bacon, throw some brisket in there with some jalapenos on top. That sounds really good. But we're going classic with the bacon cheddar today. And then of course, some chives, because what doesn't sound good about that. I mean, what's not to like, folks? Crispy potato skins, melty cheese, freshly made smoky bacon. Ah, I gotta dive in. Ooh, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, it's awesome. That is so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, so cheesy. So crispy. Mm. Honestly, I'll take one of these over a baked potato any day of the week. Ooh, hot. Oh, the bacon is so good. Mm. Oh, I love a good potato skin. So cheesy, bacony. Little bit of vegetable, just a little bit. It's got a really nice smoky flavor to it too, both from the pellets and from the smoky bacon. 
Oh, it's awesome. Mm. Is it weird that I want to put hot sauce on these? Ooh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, these are beautiful. I can eat these all day, and I think I will. Oh, it's cheesy and bacony and sour creamy. Mm, mm, mm. It's phenomenal. It's like a little potato taco. I was considering doing a different variation, like I was saying, with the brisket and barbecue sauce and jalapeno, or pulled pork with crispy skin on top, or just ground beef and cheese, like a cheeseburger loaded into a french fry, but you know, there's just something so good about the classic. Ooh. And with homemade jowl bacon, <laughs> come on. Mm. All right, six more, and then I'm gonna stop. It's so pretty. Mm. All right, I think I just ate like three full potatoes. So, on that note, I think it's time for the official taste test. Alright y'all, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely incredible, fully loaded, smoky potato skins. I highly recommend giving this one a try. And especially if you're not going to bust out two different smokers and take the better part of a week to make your own bacon. This comes together real quick, and it's super tasty, and I highly recommend you check it out very soon. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, please. Just hit that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members, thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!